Well, this is a story about the magic of connection. It started in 2018. I was general manager of a business working in a high-risk industry, and recruiting our staff was an important part of my role. All of our guys came from the lower socioeconomic suburbs of Auckland, New Zealand's largest city. Some had came from troubled backgrounds. Several were connected to drugs. Their work was physically demanding, requiring a high level of fitness, strength and stamina. Robbie, not his real name, presented differently. Slight in stature, well educated and from an affluent neighbourhood. What he lacked in structure, he more than compensated through his good work ethic and ability to lead. It wasn't long before he was promoted to the position of truck boss. A role where he was responsible for the safety of his crew and also a $250,000 custom built truck. He excelled at his role for several months and then things started to change. He started displaying a, an erratic behavior and a gung-ho kind of attitude. The quality of his work was slipping and there'd been a couple of accidents while driving the truck. His workmates started raising concerns for their safety when working alongside him on site and also while in the truck while he was driving. Suspicions arose that he may actually be working under the influence of drugs. The decision was taken for him to undergo an on-site drug test. The results, he failed 80% of the tests that were required of him. Clearly not fit for work and a danger to himself and everybody else around him. The owner of the business was clear. Robbie was to be gone by lunchtime. It fell to me to terminate Robbie as quickly and as cleanly as possible. I'd terminated many workers in the past. Robbie would be just one more. The interrogation began as they often do. You outline the reason for the meeting and provide them an opportunity to share their side of the story. About five minutes in, Robbie's eyes welled up and that previous gung-ho attitude disappeared. He reached into his pocket and handed me a piece of paper. It was a letter from his counsellor. As I started reading, my heart broke open. At the age of 11, through circumstances not of his doing, his entire world was turned upside down. And he didn't have, at that young age, he had no skills to cope with what he'd just been put through. It went on to say how he'd been a good student, well liked by his teachers and peers, and also a keen sportsman, through to getting into trouble and hanging out with the wrong crowd. As time went by, he had, his life had continued to fall apart. Now, at the age of 18, he had fallen into the drug scene, initially as a user, and more recently as an importer and dealer. What once had been a, an exemplary young man, he had now been before the courts. He was awaiting sentencing where prison time was a likely outcome. The judge had indicated that one thing that could spare him from prison was that he was still employed with a good full-time paying job. I found myself firmly wedged between a rock and a hard place. Robbie posed a very real threat to the business. And keeping him employed was not an option. Dismissing him could likely send him to prison, a place that he didn't belong and a world that would destroy what was left of his life. All the while, the business owner's instructions had been perfectly clear as to what had to happen. For several moments, we sat in that room in gentle silence. The clinical and hard-nosed decision to, uh, to terminate faded away. The imbalance of power and hierarchy didn't exist anymore. No more was it Gail, the general manager, and Robbie, the errant employee. It was just two people, Robbie and Gail, caught in an impossible situation. How do you terminate someone when you know you could be sending them to prison? How can you keep them employed when you know they're a threat to the business? Stonewalled and bereft of a solution, I realised I didn't have any tools in my toolbox to deal with this. 
we started talking about all sorts of things. I don't actually remember what, but I do recall there was laughter and there were tears. There was no judgment, no distractions, just two people fully connecting heart to heart. It was in that space that a perfect solution materialised. We could suspend Robbie without pay. He would still be employed and the judge would most likely look favourably upon him. At the same time, we had been recruiting for other workers, so I would simply add one more person and that would ensure the business wasn't adversely impacted. A perfect outcome for all parties. This story didn't finish there. I'd been instructed by the owner to call him immediately after the meeting. When it became apparent I'd wavered from his explicit instructions, um, it'd be fair to say his seething anger was palpable. I'd just put my neck out for Robbie that day, and as I say, I completely overrode my boss's instructions. That's when it finally hit me that not only Robbie, but I too could be gone by lunchtime. Rather than uh, explaining over the phone what I'd done, I sent him an email with Robbie's letter attached and asked that he read it and then call me back. Knowing that my head could be on the chopping block, it'd be fair to say that was the longest 15 minutes or so of my life. The phone call came. It was like I was talking to a completely different person. There was a compassion in his voice and a sadness for what he'd read. He and his wife had read the letter several times, clearly impacted by what they learned. He talked about how we never know what it could be like to live in another person's life and how quickly it can all change. Rather than my job being in jeopardy, he was now grateful and appreciative of what I'd done. The beautiful thing was he also saw Robbie as a, as a, not as a drug dealer, but as a decent young man coping the best he could. He and I, and I'm talking about the boss now, he and I had never really connected in the three years we'd worked together. That day, we did. There was still another outcome, unexpectedly, to come. Every single one of our guys knew it could easily have been them that day undergoing that drug test. Each of them saw their workmate being treated with compassion, dignity and respect. They saw the business doing everything it could to do the best outcomes for Robbie and for the business. The morale within the organisation skyrocketed. There was one more unexpected twist. About six months later, I received an unexpected email from Robbie. Now, spared from prison, he had resigned his job so he could focus on going forward with his life. He shared how he'd been in rehab and was now completely clean of drugs. He was making plans for his future. It was a joy and a delight to read. The words that he finished with have stayed with me ever since. Gail, I can never thank you enough for what you did for me. You saved my life. This story happened to me. It could just as easily happen to any one of us here today. At any given moment, we can experience or be faced with a situation where being able to connect and be present could be the different, make the difference to the course of that day. And yet every day, we miss the opportunities that are right in front of us through looking at our devices, our heads being filled with ideas, or simply the everyday busyness of life. Connecting with another being, human being, needn't be a burden. Not something, it's not something we just do when we can find the time. It's going to be a spontaneous moment of eye contact with a warm smile with complete strangers. Or asking of a friend, how are you doing? And waiting around long enough to actually listen to their answer. Several years ago, while travelling in India, I... Was, I came across a quotation that I think is perfect to share here now. Connection is when you feel the other and feel felt by the other. In the past few years, I've sought to understand what really happened that day. What was it that enabled so many beautiful outcomes from what started 
in a dire situation. I found my answer in one powerful word, connection. And here's what I learned. The pathway to connection is an inside journey. It starts from within, directly from our hearts. It invites us to look deeper and connect with our humanness and the courage to be seen as we truly are. My most vulnerable moment was when I had to admit to myself I didn't have the tools in my toolbox to deal with what, I was, what, had, what had presented. And yet it was in that vulnerable position that a pivot took place that went on to create this beautiful stage of all the outcomes that followed. I could have stayed staunch to the brief. He's to be gone by lunchtime. I would have notched up another termination and there'd be no story to share with you here today. There's no magic in that. Through being fully connected and heart-centred, the life of a young man was saved. For me, that's the magic of connection. Thank you.